Okay, this is a very important topic in probability and statistics. It is about joint probability distributions. Okay, so we can construct joint probability distributions for both continuous and discrete random variables. Uh, and, and from a joint probability distribution, we can compute things like a marginal distribution and correlations and things of that sort. Uh, but uh, we will get to some of those things later. And I just want to say that most of the things that we are going to do with joint probability distributions are going to be from the standpoint of continuous uh, probability densities. Uh, we, we will say uh, a few things about uh, doing this for discrete random variables. As we saw before, basically you're going to go through and you're going to convert integrals to summations and to get probabilities uh, from the distribution. So, so this is, um, this is a, uh, basically a lecture on joint probability distributions when we have continuous probability densities. Okay, so the joint probability density is uh, the density for two continuous random variables now. Uh, we have variables x and y, and we have a, a density that governs uh, the simultaneous occurrence of both random variables taking values x and y. And we write this f sub xy uh, as a function of both. Now this thing satisfies a couple of properties. Uh, one, it's always positive, uh, or non-negative I should say, uh, which is the same as we required for probability densities in the case of, uh, of a single variable. Uh, two, is that this thing is going to be normalized, right? So now our normalization requirement looks a little different. Before we just integrated over one variable and we required our density to integrate to one. Uh, now we're going to integrate over both variables, so both of them in principle can take uh, values from minus infinity up to infinity, and uh, when we integrate that whole thing, uh, we get one for this. Uh, so that says that that density is normalized. Uh, now the third requirement is that for, for any region in space, uh, the probability that um, the probability uh, that I will be in that region is given by the integral over that region, right? So this is really uh, the same kind of thing as what we had done before, where we integrated a density over an interval and got the probability. Now we're going to integrate the density over a two-dimensional region in space to get the probability uh, of our range, uh, to get the probability of our um, being in that in that little uh, subsection of the whole range. Okay, so. Uh, another, another definition for us, uh, if we take a joint density, uh, we can project that onto, oh sorry, I have a, um, a video being uploaded there. Uh, if we take a uh, probability density, uh, joint density f of x and y, uh, then we can project that onto a lower dimensional variable uh, q of x and y. So this new variable q is now a function of both x and y. And this is a little bit different from what your book teaches, uh, but this will give us the marginal density f sub q of q as fq uh, is a uh, integral over uh, all x and y with the delta function. This is now the direct delta function uh, with q of x and y uh, minus some specific value of the random variable q uh, is uh, this small q here. Okay, so. Uh, notice what's happening, right? So uh, when big Q of X and Y is not equal to Q, this thing returns zero, right? So now and then we'll have uh, a combination of X and Y that gives me the value Q from this big function, this function big Q. Okay, so those values are going to contribute an infinite spike, but of course it's an infinitely small area. And, and this basically is uh, converting um, the distribution of these two variables into a distribution of Q. Okay, so this is a really, really powerful trick uh, to be able to use. Um, so your book only shows you how you can integrate out X or integrate out Y. But quite frequently, what we might want to collapse to is the sum of X and Y, for example. So in this formula, we would write X plus Y minus Q and inside the delta function and integrate that with our marginal with our joint probability distribution to get the distribution of the sum of x and y which is a new variable q okay so so this now would convert that in, into this for us so we can do a lot more problems using this formula than the simple uh, marginal distribution cases that they give you in the book those are really really pretty limited all right so um, so let's go through and do an example uh, we're going to let T1 be the random time until a computer server connects to your computer. 
and we're going to let T2 be the random time until the server authorizes you as a valid user. So obviously you cannot be authorized until you have connected and so T2 has to be greater than T1 and T1 uh, is a waiting time so it's going to be greater than zero. Okay, so a reasonable model uh, would be to say that there's a rate of connection K1 and after connection there's also a rate of authorization K2. Okay, so we're suggesting here that we have two sequential exponential random variables and that those are going to give us some joint distribution. Okay, so let's try and think about uh, what that joint distribution would look like. Uh, it's um, a first time, so K1 uh, governs the connection time and that's a uh, exponentially decaying um, decaying uh, function. So this is a um, this is an exponential distribution for the connection time and then after I have connected uh, I have another waiting time uh, and that waiting time really is T2 minus T1 which must be some positive uh, value uh, because I can only be authorized after I've connected. Uh, so whatever T1 comes out to be there's going to be some additional time. T2 minus T1 is the T2 is the time of authorization and, and that decays uh, with a with a rate k2. Okay, so we've got these two exponential distributions here and we're requiring that t2 minus t1 be greater than or equal to zero and also that t2 minus t1 be uh, uh, be less, if t2 minus t1 is less than zero this distribution just doesn't have any any support in that area. Okay, so now we can ask is f of t1 t2 uh, this, this is a joint distribution and we can ask is this a normalized density? Okay, well uh, we have to go through and do some integrals to do that, right? So remember that in order to uh, do this we're going to integrate from minus infinity to infinity but this allows us uh, the fact that the, the density is equal to zero in so much of the plane, the T1, T2 plane, allows us to modify those integration bounds. And now instead of integrating from minus infinity to infinity in T1 and T2, we're going to integrate T2 from T1 up to infinity, right? So it's only non-zero after the time T1. And uh, time T1 can take values from zero up to infinity. Okay, so if we go through and we do these integrals, I will uh, let you do those on, on your own, uh, but they are uh, really not so bad. We're going to change variables here and uh, on the interior integral and, uh, and that gives us this and now we have to integrate one more time. Uh, so, so notice that this is just an integral over the exponential distribution. We know this integral by heart because we know that that's the right form of the exponential distribution. It's going from the right range from zero to infinity. And so this must come out to be one. And so indeed, yes, uh, we have a normalized distribution the way we wrote this down. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty remarkable when you think about the process correctly and write down the distribution. Uh, it's a good check to go back and see uh, whether it comes out to be normalized. Um, okay, and, and when you've thought about it correctly, it, it will. Uh, okay, so, um, so now we want to ask, uh, what is the marginal density uh, for the uh, for the authorization time t2. Okay, well now that's that's kind of complicated, right? So now think about this. Uh, the uh, the computer we have one density for t1, and then after that we have a uh, a part that governs t2 minus t1. These are two sequential exponential processes, and uh, we're saying that that we're going to now integrate out the t1 and get some effective density that just governs uh, waiting for authorization. Uh, which of course is the important thing um, and and so this is pretty realistic right I mean if you've ever gone to a hotel and checked uh, tried to get online you have to sit there and wait for the thing to authorize uh, authorize you to use the web and so you really care about time T2 alright we don't really care about the time in which we plug in uh, to their um, to their LAN connection we care about when we can actually begin to check our email okay so here is um, here is uh, f of t2 and we're going to now uh, remember this delta function formula is what we're going to do. We're going to use this marginal density, we're going to compute this marginal density, that is we're going to project away the t2 variable. Okay, so here's the general formula. We're integrating from the same range. This is the entire range. So t1 goes from 0 to infinity and t2 goes from t1 up to infinity and we've got our uh, joint probability distribution. We've got our delta function on the inside of the integral here. Uh, so this is delta of t2 uh, which is a function of, of t2. That's uh, pretty easy, right? So I've got 
T2 minus T2 star. Um, nothing, nothing really surprising here. And we're going to integrate this out. So in this case, the formula in your book would have worked fine. Uh, you, are, you are just basically integrating away the T1 dependence. Uh, but, but this sort of keeps track of all the bookkeeping for you. So now I have F, the joint probability, um, at T1 and T2 star. And uh, this is being integrated from 0 up to infinity. Okay, so going through and, uh, and doing this integration then uh, gives me, um, you know, there's my T2 stars, the only place that enters this formula. I now have to integrate out the T1, and we can plug this integral into Mathematica. It's a little bit more complicated uh, than the ones that we've done in the past. Uh, but Mathematica can do it with no problem. Um, so, so here is the um, here is the formula that we get out. It's k1 times k2 over k1 minus k2. We've got an exponential part uh, with a k1 plus k2 uh, time constant now, um, and then this is multiplied by my random variable t2. So this is my authorization time, and uh, then we have uh, another piece that's time dependent. That's e to the k1 t2 minus e to the k2 t2. Okay, so this is not one of our familiar uh, dense probability densities, uh, but it is the uh, the marginal density. Uh, that is to say, also I'll use the terminology the projection, the projected density uh, onto the variable t2. Okay, so we've gotten rid of uh, t1, and what you can think of that doing is taking the entire slice of uh, a distribution in the two two variable planes. So I've got t2 and t1 here, and we're projecting everything onto t2. So Anywhere out here where I have probability weight along this vertical line, I'm projecting it all onto the variable t2 and thinking of there just being a new density that takes account of all that weight along this vertical axis. Okay, so uh, that's it for uh, marginal distributions and uh, we'll have some homework problems to practice.